next we'll move into the responses to inquiries, uh, which I know you have a number, but uh, we'll try to get through the responses to inquiries quickly because uh, Mr. Hildebrand's presentation is next and everyone wants that. <laughs> so uh, I'm in between um, this and Mr. Hildebrand, so I will try to use my quick speaking voice to read through these. There's a number of questions, so I will just read straight through them. Um, one question, I was told there would be an investigation into the violent incidents in January 2018 once Dr. Fahill was on board, so when will the investigation begin? As this matter is a subject of pending litigation, the board will not be commenting any further based on the advice of counsel. The, uh, another question. The only statement made by you on EJ's condition after he stabbed Brian Stamps is that he was not seriously injured. Will you correct the record? So I have to respond. The Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, precludes the district from disclosing any personal identifying information concerning any current or former student or any third parties. The board will not be commenting any further on this matter based on the advice of counsel. Another question, given the egregious violations of security protocol, why was the medical director granted tenure after January 2018? Why does she still have her job today? As I was not the superintendent of schools at this time, the decision was made, and it would be inappropriate for me to comment on previous tenure awards. Moreover, counsel has advised that the disclosure of this type of information regarding our employees including our medical director, would constitute an unwarranted evasion of privacy under applicable law and could be subject the district to needless and unnecessary litigation to the extent it is disclosed. The board will not be commenting any further on this matter based on the advice of counsel. The school safety plan says call 911, but high school staff are directed to call school secretaries in an emergency can you explain the seeming contradiction? How is adding these extra layers to emergency response helpful? So I have been informed by um, Mr. Stervaji, the New Rochelle High School building principal, that none of our staff members have been directed to contact school secretaries in the event of emergency. Anyone who is, sees or witnesses an emergency should call 911 directly, and that is for the record. Um, Board resolutions on school buddy programs have been used by certain board members as a blank check to enter schools at any time without specific advance approval from the board as required under laws, under the law. Uh, your lawyers have claimed that the resolution 2037 authorizes board members to do so. 2037 says board members are encouraged to attend as many events as possible. Uh, the district sent an inquiry about this matter and received an opinion. We did so in response to previous attempts to argue that the district has violated applicable law in facilitating the school buddy program. There is an opinion on this matter, which we shared uh, with the inquirer in the unredacted form. Another question is, the public, was the public was repeatedly assured of full transparency with regard to the apex grade inflation. Uh, you failed to announce the apex matter was reopened a month after the completed final report was delivered. And last month, you received a new apex report, yet failed to release the promised completed unredacted report. The initial, the response is, the initial apex report was shared with the public. The second report has not been fully reviewed by the Board of Education in executive session. Once this process has been completed in the near future, the report will be subject to disclosure pursuant to FOIL and will be publicly released in accordance with that statute based upon the advice of counsel. Moreover, it is completely inappropriate for the Board of Ed to comment or speak on behalf of the State Education Department and any investigation it may be conducting to the extent that someone is seeking that information about the SC, uh, State Department of Education and what they're doing and its response, they can contact uh, SED directly. Another question, can you clarify board policy 9340 on who may speak during public comment? This policy references members of the public, then school district residents, then just residents. 
Is it the policy of the board that only people who reside in the district can speak? Please be assured that your comments and concerns regarding clarification of the above policy will be considered by the board prior to the final adoption of this policy. We appreciate everyone's input. Please note, however, that we have consistently permitted non-residents to speak at our meetings. Another question, your policies say that those engaged in fundraising must adhere to the district's policies and regulations and that no fundraising activity will be considered if in violation of the law. The law is Regents Rule 19.6, which prohibits the direction solicitation of charitable donations from the public school students on school property during school hours. Your fundraisers are not only illegal under 19.6, but illegal under 19. 915, which prohibits sale of soda, candy, gum, and other sweets from the beginning of the school day to the last scheduled meal period. I mentioned before, we are looking into fundraising practices that have long existed in the district. We conducted fundraising training with all of our principals, and we're eager to develop and present the Board of Education with new policies for your review and consideration, as well as uh, superintendent's regulations which will be corresponding that the district will provide uh, based on that policy that you would adopt. Um, policy 1310 on the book since 1988 says employees are restricted from engaging in political activities during work time when they are to devote their full attention to their work. Why have you allowed certain teachers to violate this policy with impunity? The premise this is the response, the premise of your question, asserting that anyone who has been allowed to violate any of our policies with impunity is simply inaccurate. Any known violations of the policy have been addressed in an appropriate manner. Anyone that was brought to my attention, the manner in which some issue, which such issues have been addressed with specific staff is confidential and will not be disclosed. Another question, your homepage lists the answers posted about 10 months ago, what happened to the policy of posting answers to questions that are unanswered at meetings? The board has not adopted any policies concerning the posted, posting of responses to questions that have been answered at meetings as has been suggested. Nonetheless, we have endeavored to answer relevant questions to the extent possible and intend to continue to do so in the future particularly in the context of the development and adoption of the 2021 budget. Just a few more. The board has claimed for years that a policy committee was reviewing or updating board policies. When might it be completed? The board did not create a policy committee for the 2021 school year. Instead, the board has asked our attorneys, Ingerman Smith, to review our poli policies recommend revisions and address any questions that the administration and or board might have concerning this work. The process takes time and is being facilitated on an ongoing basis. Another question, has SED acted on the waiver pertaining to the loss of state aid as a result of insufficient instructional hours at the two middle schools? The waiver has been filed. Another question, since Columbine, a parade of security consultants have recommended more interior and exterior CCTV cameras, which might help deter anti-Semitic graffiti, false fire alarm poles, and employees monitoring those cameras in real time. Are you prepared to act on those recommendations? And if so, when? We are considering all recommendations that have been made by Altaris and are still in the process of determining which of the recommendations will be acted on. This careful analysis will include consideration in our budget and each recommendation as well as the appropriate timing for potential implementation of recommendations, including the one that is the subject of the inquiry. We will continue to update the community as we had in other meetings as our final decisions are being made. In light of board policies 5165 and 1530, should parents include board members send alcohol or tobacco products to school employees in schools? Are alcohol or tobacco allowed on school grounds? 
Uh, the response is board policies 5165 and 1530 are clear on their face and we have shared council's opinion letter on this issue with the on this issue with the public. We believe these policies and the opinion letter speaks for itself as to what is permissible. Okay. And that's the last question. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I think everybody knows that uh, I gave a gift of uh, some uh, bottles of Prosecco to some teachers in, as a, in my capacity as a parent at Albert Leonard. And um, it has come to my attention and the attention of most people who read <laughs> that that is not permitted. And I, uh, to the extent that uh, that is not permitted, I will not be doing that in the future. Um, I just for other parents, if ever you want to give a gift um, such as the one that I gave, it should be done a thousand foot from any school. So, duly noted. Sure. Uh, I also have given uh, gifts of alcohol to teachers, and I will no longer be doing that as well. All right. Thank you very much. At this point in time, we're going to be turning to the main show, which is Mr. Hill.